Hello and welcome to Final Whistle with me, Daniel Watson, looking back at Hibs 2-1 defeat away to Livingston. Coming up, James Delaney and I discuss the match, Neil Lennon speaks with Hibs TV, and we have the post-match thoughts from Daryl Horgan. Due to the technical problems that we faced at the Tony Macaroni Arena, we have no audio for the goal highlights, so let's throw straight into the analysis with myself and James. James, we've been doing this podcast for just over a year now. Um, there's not been that many defeats, but when it has been, we've always been sort of fairly methodical. You may be able to, to look for the positives, but I mean, frankly, that, <laughs> that was poor. Really, really below par and unacceptable stuff for Hibs. Yeah, I mean that was um, that was not good at all, was it? Um, you know, there's, there's not really much point in, in trying to put a positive spin on that or, or shying away from it. Um, that really was not good at all. Um, from the moment that we we actually scored until the end of the game, I don't think we actually had another shot on goal, did we? Or Boyle had a shot right Boyle at the end. Shot but, I mean, that was that was really the only time we threatened. We not only allowed. Livingston, who, with the greatest of the respect, them as a team that we should be beating without any trouble at all, um, back into the game, we allowed them to control it, um, which on our part is is very poor. Um, I can't imagine there'll be uh, there'll be too many players going into that dressing room and and uh, enjoying their their time in there at the moment. Um, I'm sure Neil and the coaching staff are are giving them a bit of a I think that what was it the hair dryer uh, that. Fergie had so yeah it was just um, it wasn't good and it's not one that we'll be looking back on fondly at all um, it's yeah you've already said it, we even let Livingston control the game it's not even as if he can come away from this going oh man they, they really bullied us they showed their physical presence they didn't just kind of outfight Hibs they outplayed Hibs at times and when you think back on the flexion of chances Adam Bogdan had a couple of really good saves that could have stopped us from being even worse yeah he did he had um, one absolutely brilliant save um, from from Scott Pittman in the second half a header um, he had another one from Pittman right at the start of the second half one from I can't remember who it was I think it's Cadden who came on uh, curled one and he, he, that was actually a very good save as well um, so yeah you're right I mean I think it was it was one of those where you can say you know, it was a bad day at the office you can say it was this or that but just you know, at base level, it wasn't good enough. Um, I think Bogdan, possibly one of only maybe two players to get past Mark me today. I thought Horgan did well as well when he uh, when he got on the ball. Minus uh, gets the goal. Deliveries. Minus his set piece deliveries, but I mean that was a problem kind of throughout the whole team rather than just from from Daryl Horgan today. Um, it was, you know, it was it was very very poor. But yeah, you're right. I think um, you know Adam Bogdan. To be fair to him, it's possibly his best performance in goal since since the Astoras game. Yeah, yeah, definitely. In Greece, yeah. Um, with the saves that he made. So, yeah. Um, but I mean, I think that's about as positive as we're going to get on this, to be honest. Uh, yeah, I mean, when you go one 0 up early on in the second half, you, you're not expecting matches like this to be kind of football and classic. So it was a good scrappy goal that we scored. Mm. You think from then, Hibs are kind of they'll build on it, uh, use their kind of experience, professionalism to see it out, and uh, they just seem to almost kind of fall apart or crumble. Yeah. Um, I think I mean what, what did we score after 53 minutes or something and I mean it took Livingston 6 minutes to equalise fair play to Sean Byrne it's a very good goal um, takes it really well defensively from our point of view it's not really good enough but look, we just we never really looked like we were going to create anything um, after we scored and it, it was kind of something that we brought up a little bit last week when we were talking about the Aberdeen game where after Jamie McLaren equalised we just, for some reason, Aberdeen seemed to be right in the ascendancy, and it, it was almost like you know we took our foot off the gas, and we just completely sort of, you know, we didn't even say relax. We just kind of went to pieces a little bit, um, and you know it's it. I wouldn't go. I mean, it's worrying in a way to see that you know that's the way that we've responded twice now to scoring um, in, in consecutive weeks. Um, you know, you, you do start to maybe wonder a little bit about you know the, the mentality. Um, given how strong our mentality has been over the past, you know, year or so, or, or past couple of years even, where you know we were able to fight back and and win games and you know scrap and scrape and and do things that you know typically Hibs teams in recent years haven't done. Um, but the, you know that's it is a concerning point. To, you know that's twice now in in two weeks where we've scored and immediately let the opposition back into the game. Yeah, and I think 
for all there was chat of the pitch before the game there's there's two teams that, that need to play on that the, the other kind of thing to, to build on from last week was we, we talked in the second half about how there was times when Aberdeen when they rarely got into the Hibs half you could see the big hole the gap mm. in midfield that was there that was evident for 90 minutes today there was moments where there was a ball getting cleared to the edge of the box and there wasn't just one there was two or three Levy players yeah. no one near them and uh, you kind of feel like stuff needs to get so it's good that we've got the break now I suppose but really really needed but you kind of hope and pray that Mark Milligan's paperwork is all sorted for two weeks today yeah it should be and, and hopefully you know there's there's no issues with the, the training camp over in Turkey that him and Jerry McLaren are heading to um, for with the Australia squad but yeah you're right I mean you could see kind of Livingston's game plan today uh, <gasps> Um, you know, and I, I'm not being critical of Livingston because they clearly sort of deserve the three points today. And um, it was, every time Alan Lithgow got the ball um, for a long throw on either side, it was going into the box, and it wasn't about winning the first ball; it was about winning the second and third one. Um, and having a few times in the first half where you know it's, it's Porteous or Ambrose or Hanlon um, or, or whoever it is getting ahead on it, and you're right, the ball would go to the edge of the box, and there just seemed to be this gap of you know. 20, 30 yards, not even, even if it was a, you know, a few yards, it was an absolute gaping hole in the middle of the pitch where we just had nobody picking the ball up and it was allowing guys like Sean Byrne and Scott Pittman to, to pick it up and, and have a go. Um, you know, the first half didn't really work for them, but the first Livingston goal, you know, we, we half threw the ball to the edge of the box. Sean Byrne gets it, he takes it past two Hibs players and, and takes it past them far too easily and um, yeah, there's not a lot I well, Dan can do because it goes through somebody's legs. I don't think he sees it, um, you know, until very late. Um, and, I mean, it's a similar story with the uh, with the second goal as well. It's, it's just we're not picking you know people up on the edge of the box. That one we just we're, we're sleeping as we're making a substitution. And you know, it, it comes to Scott Pittman and, and fair play to him again because it's an absolutely you know superb finish. He lashes it past Adam Bogdan, but. You know, from a Hibs point of view and from a defensive point of view, it's just not really good enough. No, um, so to, to kind of unfortunately get into the game, we'll kind try and fly through this as fast as possible. Um, two changes from Hibs: uh, Lewis Allen um, started up front. He took place of Ollie Shaw. David Gray played for Hibs in one thousand one hundred and thirty-four days. And to be fair to him, I thought he done well. I thought he did. Then uh, done the simple was, things well. Yeah, he did. And you can tell he's a, a physical player. And he's maybe a slightly, slightly different player to, to Ollie Shaw and Jamie McLaren. Um, so I can, I can see, you know, up against the likes of Declan Gallagher and Craig Halkett at that Livingston backline, you know, you're going to need a bit of height and a bit of physicality. I thought he, he did that. In some good, uh, some good moments, some decent hold-up play. I thought he, he linked up quite well with. Um, I think it's like Malin and, and McLaren on occasion it didn't quite happen all the time but you know again you can't really expect a guy who is you know, 22 which I, I can't believe it was <laughs> 22 we said that before the game it seems like he's only about 18 or 19 but he's, he seems to have been around for ages at the same time um, you can't expect a guy who's 22 and, and like we say not played a game for the team and, and you know, getting on for what three or four years now and to come in and just immediately link up with the players in, in that team so I thought he gave a, a decent account of himself um, and you know, it's, it is probably quite a, a critical time in his career as well where, um, again I, I can't imagine there were too many uh, too many Hibs fans expecting him to be in the squad today let alone in the starting lineup. And, and he certainly did himself no harm it's a, a decent performance yeah so he, he starts greys out injured so Boyle goes back to his more natural position on the right um, Jamie McLaren starts up front um, Hibs kind of started reasonably well Wicker had a shot blocked in the opening couple of minutes Boyle had a good run and then one of many shots that went about five yards over the bar not from just Boyle I should emphasise but everyone yeah. everyone had a shot at it um, Levy we've mentioned already that their aerial threat with the long throws in the corners it was I think it was a Lamy or Lamy was, he just won everything in the air uh, he has a header that's flicked in by Menga Bogdan does well to tip it around the post um, and yeah we've already discussed that about how there was no one picking up the second or third ball so let's not punish ourselves with that um, there was a a shot by Lewis Allen a kind of volley come bicycle kick it was well held before that, yeah, that would have been a good one, that half a shout for a handball in the build up to that I mean I think it's one of those where you know obviously from a point of view we're totally biased and it was definitely a handball and <laughs> it should have been a penalty but you know you've seen them given doesn't necessarily mean that always a handball 
Yeah, so um, there's another chance for uh, Menga. He has a chance that if he squares it, it's a tap in. Fortunately, Paul Hanlon blocks that group, uh, blocks the pass. Um, there's right on half time, Martin Boyle does well, puts in a cross. Lewis Allen misses it when it looks like he could have got something on it. It falls perfectly for possibly the worst person it could <laughs> fall perfectly to. On which his is right L- as well. Lewis Stevenson, who also puts it well over the bar. Uh, that takes us up to half time and probably the highlight of the first half is you uh, murdering Adam Bogdan on Twitter yeah, well yeah look you know it wasn't a good day for anybody today uh, I think that's probably the best way to say it um, I mean I overshadowing the actual greatest moment of the first half there which was the water sprinkler coming on at the, uh, at the side of the pitch which uh, got the correct reaction for everybody um, which was about the most threatening that, uh, <laughs> that we looked at sometimes during this no uh, yeah I mean, it says something where that's, you know, we're kind of championing that as the highlight of the first half. <laughs> More from James and I shortly, but let's hear from Neil Lennon speaking with Hibs TV. Neil, bad day at the office today. Yeah, one of the poorest I've had for a long, long time. You know, we uh, thought we were all right first half, you know, decent control of the game, missed a really good chance just before half time. Get the goal second half, but our defending for the two goals are abysmal. There was no real cohesion about us today. And I thought once Livingston equalised, the momentum was with them, and we looked as if we lacked a bit of character to see, you know, get, or get another goal. We made some changes to be positive, but um, defensively for the two goals, we were absolutely abysmal. But it's my fault, I'll take responsibility. Um, I don't know if the players were ready for the game, they should have been. We warned them that Livingston were a big physical side. If we are going to. Not not compete, which is very unlike us. But if you're not going to compete, then we could be in for a long season. But I've got a bit, bit of work to do, bit of work to do on the mental side of the game as well. You know, from a Livingston point of view, you would say they're two great goals. But from our point of view, the defending is awful. Absolute people going to ground, people turning their back on it. And that's not what we work on at all. You said you've got work to do, but the players that you have there are much better than that performance that they showed. Ah, well, I think so. I think so. I thought um, even towards the end, we had to throw Ryan up there to try and get some... Our set players were... You know, we've, we've kicked one out of play, we've kicked another one out of play. I think that summed their day up, really. Lack of quality and um, lack of belief, you know, and um, I don't know if there's too many changes too soon, but we need to get players better and quickly and um, start rectifying, you know, that's, that's our first defeat with five points from four games, it's not enough. I mean, you said in the first half there we had chances, if we'd put one or two of them away it might have been a different game, but then to go into the lead early in the second half, you must have thought we would kick on from there. Yeah, yeah. You're thinking we'll get, that, that will give us control of the game, and um, but we started losing second balls in midfield, and giving the impetus to Livingston. That's why we brought another midfielder on. However, you know, we dealt with the first cross for the goal, and then he's beaten two of our players far too easily and got a shot off. That is symptomatic of our day. Now maybe that's me not preparing the players right. I doubt that very much, but. I can't put all the onus on the players I have to look at my own performance and say was that enough one of the positives I thought from the game was the performance of young Lewis Allen you threw him in today I thought he did very well in the time he was on the pitch yeah I totally agree with you I thought he was excellent and um, held the ball up very well so he just ran out of steam a little bit towards the end but um, he can be pleased with his performance here very much so week off now with the international break obviously a few players away that you can't work with but some time to work with the lads on the training pitch over that period the guys that are left behind yeah it's um, it's going to be a long two weeks you know I'm sure they're looking forward to getting back to playing but we have a break and maybe it'll get us you know more time to get players up to speed but um, we looked a little bit late we had second half as well and that, you know it's unacceptable you know to come here and play as, as not as poorly as that but as disjointed as that there's no players taking responsibility kept passing in the wrong areas inviting pressure and in the end you know we've tried to force the issue but we looked lacking a bit of character today which again maybe is my fault I don't know transfer windows closed so you now have to go with the squad that you've got Mark Milligan obviously is one that you'll be looking to get involved uh, he's on this training camp with Australia when he comes back from that is his work permit likely to be through and we'll see him well, I hope so yeah we could do with a bit of physicality you know in, in midfield 
But um, it, it's not the lack of physicality that, you know, we, that our downfall was today. It was ill-disciplined, you know, or ill-disciplined and a lack of quality at times. And um, I don't know where that's came from because it was a shadow of the team that played really well last week. Let's see if we can do the second half quicker. Right from the off, Levy are looking dangerous every time they go forward. Um, there's one where Pittman has loads all the time in the world in the box. It fortunately hits straight at Bogdan. I think that's in the opening 30 seconds or so of the second Miraculous half. Miraculous resurrection back in Bogdan. <laughs> Rises from the dead. Um, the goal itself that Hibs score... <laughs> It's hard to describe. There's bodies kind of think, flying um, everywhere in the box. And Scotland's unique in that we actually have the only word in the you know the world that actually fits this, which is stramash. Yeah, yeah it's the only way you can describe it. Um, it's five or ten people trying to kick the ball all at once, and fortunately Daryl Horgan gets there a millisecond before them and kind of prods it over the line, um, which you know they all count and uh, at that point I think we would have taken it yeah and uh, you kind of you thought Hibs would maybe not even build from there but confidence would grow but no um, within five six minutes burn decent finish um, and it's one each Hibs then make the first change not long after that Emerson Heinemann coming on for Jamie McLaren yeah um, go at that stage you can kind of see that or you wonder if that's maybe a substitution that's been mooted before Livingston score Um in that with our goal up Livingston are obviously getting pretty physical McLaren I thought had a couple of decent runs and, and looked dangerous when he got into the box but didn't really have any sort of clear cut chances and like we already said you know Lewis Allen was you know, using his body well and, and actually looking alright in terms of that so I, I wonder if it was to, the idea was to have Hindman and Horgan playing off Lewis Allen but at the same time you know making that sub after Livingston have scored <sighs> it kind of doesn't really work because you lose McLaren's running up front you're not playing with the entire game in front of the Livingston defence you're actually having to try and go in behind at this point um, and it kind of it's I mean it's not Emerson Hyman's fault but it did it's, it's kind of threw a rhythm off a little bit um, and again you know it's that substitution is not the reason that we lost the game but it's one of those where you kind of look back and you go well who was that substitution actually for you know like what did that what was that actually meant to achieve yeah so we've kind of lost our main goal threat at that point um Whitaker gets booted Pittman I've got it as Pittman it might not have been has a, a completely free header like he's, there's no one near him and he's 10 yards out Bogdan does brilliantly tap over the crossbar very good save Aguipon comes on for Marlin um, and within seconds of that second substitution it's, it's, it's so, I Stephen mean, Whitaker seems to fall over Ryan Porter's I don't know loses his concentration because Whitaker yeah. Whitaker's kind of swinging to try and get anything onto the ball because he's slipped I mean we won't concede a worse goal than that this season I mean I must admit you know it's it's one of those that I only kind of half saw because I was tweeting about the substitution um, from what I gather Aguipon comes onto the pitch Livingston just immediately take the throw and we're switched off you know I don't know if we've just not realised that the sub's been made um, by which point the ball's already in the box and it's kind of too late and we're, you know it was just it was like a lot of things today where we just seem to take an extra five, ten seconds to do anything, and you can't really do that at this level because no matter who you're playing, they're going to punish you. Um, and I mean, Livingston, again, with the greatest of respect to them, are going to need to take all the points they can get this season. So if you present them with an opportunity like that, they're going to take it. And you know, we've already said it's a fantastic finish by Pittman because he—I don't think he's the most natural goal scorer in the world. Um, he absolutely blasts the ball past, uh, past Adam Bogdan but it was just you're right I mean it was just it was like a complete sh- shambles defensively and, and it's one of those if you, you you know you kind of look at it and you wonder you know we do have something missing and, and you wonder where that missing ingredient is going to come from uh, yeah so I mean beyond that Hibs create next to nothing um, I think Bogdan makes another good save from Cadden has an effort from the edge of the box um boil in sort of the last few minutes it seemed to set perfectly for him to go across goal um, he takes that extra touch he ends up t- putting it into the side netting dare I say there was Hibs, t- Hibs players there looking bereft of confidence almost we looked a little bit shell shocked um, I think just by the way that Livingston came back into the game and, and certainly with the way the second goal goes in um, I think sort of switching off defensively like that you know, it forces 
players further up the pitch maybe to be a little bit more cautious and not quite um, you know express themselves like they, they could by that point we've got Stevie Mellon off the pitch who you know somebody who can pick a pass and threaten a little bit from range is, is off um, again you know we said I thought Horgan looked looked relatively busy even though his delivery from the, the free kick we did right at the end is, is poor but again you know that wasn't just limited to him I thought just about every single corner and free kick that we had today was, was either over hit or um, you know it was just going to nobody uh, it, it wasn't necessarily exclusive to, to Horgan it was whoever was taking the, the set pieces they just weren't landing for us um, but yeah, I mean, we just looked, you know, shell shocked and, and bereft of confidence is really the only, the only sort of way you can kind of say it. Um, and it, it does take character at, at times like that to, to come back and, and win games. No matter, you know, if it is Hibs against Livingston in the league or it is Hibs against Asteras, for example, um, in, in Europe, you know, you, you do need somebody to kind of stand up and, and take responsibility. And for whatever reason, that's just uh, it's not happened for us today. So I think there'll be a lot of scrutiny mm. on the, the the lack of activity on the last day. But to me, it, that is this performance coinciding with fans' feelings yesterday is purely coincidental. Um, I yeah. still feel we've had a good window. When you look at it on paper, we're missing Darren McGregor, Flo Canberry, Mark Milligan, Marvin Bartley. There's still a really strong squad there there is and it's probably a case at the moment of the international break coming at a good time for us um, it you know not only gives us a chance to get Mark Milligan's paperwork done and actually get him you know signed and over the line it gives the likes of Darren McGregor David Gray Flo Canberry a bit of time off and a bit of time to sort of recuperate um, it gives you know most of the players a little bit of time off and it gives you know the coaching staff a little bit more time to to work on a few things that you know obviously because of our, our hectic start to the season um, and, and playing so many games they probably haven't had time to work on um, and you know for the players like Thomas Agupong and, and Emerson Hindman um, and you know the guys who have pretty much just come in the door it gives them you know a little bit extra time to to get a feeling for the club and get a feeling for you know what they're expected to achieve here that again just because of how hectic our schedule has been they probably haven't had that experience uh, yet um, you know I mean it's not it's not catastrophic you know it's a, it's a poor performance and you know it's it's one that I'm sure will be rightly criticised by um, you know the I mean I don't know how many fans were here today but you know, definitely a good few thousand um, uh, and yeah you know you can't you can't legislate for a performance like that if it, when it has been as poor as that. Um, but at the same time, you know, we, we now have a week or um, a little bit longer to get over it. Um, we've got a tough game against Kilmarnock um, after the international break. Who won at Aberdeen today, which is you know a mean feat. Um, I fired up Steve Clark, I think is the, the best way to put it. Um, so you know we'll need to come back strong. We'll be expected to come back stronger, and I'm sure that's what Neil Lennon and Gary Parker and the rest of the coaching staff will be drumming at the players just now. And now here's the post-match thoughts of Daryl Horgan speaking with Cliff Pike. Well, a frustrating afternoon for us. We've gone a goal up, look quite comfortable. We lose two poor goals and end up losing the game. Yeah, bitterly well, disappointed to be honest with you. You know, but, um, to be honest, we weren't good enough. You know, we didn't really deserve to win. Um, played okay in patches, but. All in all, didn't do enough, and you know, Livingston took their two chances. It was one of those games in the first half. We did have a few chances, didn't put them away. Unfortunately, if we maybe even got one or even two, it's a different game. But unfortunately, the second half just didn't pan out the way we wanted it to. Yeah, um, obviously, look, kind of quality up the front. It just wasn't good enough today, you know. I had my hands up on that one. It was me quite a few times more so than anyone else. But um, you know. I thought in the first half we looked quite comfortable and good control of the game but you know just sloppy really sloppy I suppose the second half the goal that you scored that was difficult to see from over there in the commentary positions a lot of bodies around about it everybody seemed to be having a swipe at it no one seemed to get a connection you managed to poke it into the far corner it was scrappy but they all count yeah exactly look it was I suppose it came from a long throw just landed around and as you said there's bodies everywhere I got a toe on it with my love but you know we, we should have seen it out from that time 
I guess the lads at the back won't be happy with the way that we dealt with the two Livingston goals defensively. We weren't too clever. It's very easy to start blaming people. You know, as 11, we weren't good enough. You know, you couldn't point the finger at anyone. The only one I thought had a good game was Louis Allen. You know, his debut, and to be honest, it's not up to him to have a good game on his debut. He just a, has to be there, and lads should drag him through it, but he was probably our best player today. We've got a week off now with the international break before we play Kilmarnock on the 15th. Your own point of view, you know, you're away with the Republic Ireland squad? I'm not sure yet. I was in the provisional squad, so I'll find out soon enough. Um, hopefully in the next day or so, I'll know anyway, but um, it's going to be a long two weeks now, isn't it? You know, It's always better when you go into these these breaks winning games and full of confidence but you know it's a, it's a bad one for us to I suppose give away and now we're going to have to think about it for the next two weeks and I suppose obsess over it and uh, try and make it right It's the frustrating thing as you say when you've lost a game you want the next one to come along as quickly as possible to put it right but all you can do is work hard on the training pitch and look forward to the Kilmarnock game Yeah that's it look we're going to have to think about this one because it's a disappointing loss it's frustrating but we're going to have to put it behind us quite quite quickly um, and get ready for the for the game as you say against Kilmarnock you know it's a massive game obviously even more so now after dropping points today so we're going to have to be at our best and hopefully get the three points you know we need them now so that'll do us for this week's episode extended highlights from Saturday are now available with the rest of this season's games as well as a huge archive of other classics all on Hibs TV Next up for us is Kelly, who come to Easter Road on September 15th. Tickets are now available online for that one, and we'll have the live match broadcast for all international Hips TV subscribers. Until next time, my thanks to James Delaney as always for joining me. Massive thank you for listening. Enjoy the international break, and join us next time on the final whistle.